What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Welcome back. Hopefully everyone's having an amazing day. For some of you, it might be Thanksgiving. Hopefully you are enjoying your Thanksgiving and you are stuffing your face and you may even have a little stuffing. Listen, if you didn't listen to this morning's video, Bank of America is confirmed once again to be a Ripple customer and it gets better. Brad Gallinghouse himself said, yes, they will be using XRP. Now, in that video I went through, Bank of America, who they were, how big they were, the competitive advantage they would get for using XRP, but we're gonna go a little bit deeper into that in this video, and we're gonna do right in the beginning, so don't you worry, and then we're gonna jump into XRP and Ripple are now involved in real estate, which is going to be a massive market. Folks, smart contracts coming to real estate is going to be huge. Listen to me, and listen to me clearly. When we look at real estate, and you have a buyer and a seller. There is no need to get a middleman involved. A middleman who is taking three to 5% or whatnot, okay? You get a smart contract, throws bad boy up in a blockchain, when payment is executed, that land deed, mortgage, whatever you wanna call it, is signed over to the person who made the payment, and the house is now theirs. Contract is executed, you can save yourself 5%. You look at 5% on top of you know, three, four, five million dollars, it's a lot of freaking money you can be saved. Now, I know some of you might be realtors out there, but at the end of the day, my personal opinion, I don't want to offend anyone, but what is a realtor really doing? They are just getting you into the house. They are the ones putting the code into the box to unlock the door. They aren't selling you a house, okay? You know if you're going to buy a house as soon as you walk through that door. You get that feel. When I was looking for my homes, for my house, for different condos that I own, I walked in, I knew right away if that is something that I wanted to fit my style. I didn't need anyone there. I didn't even open a door for me. So what if we cut that middleman out, eliminate that 5% fee that they're taking or 3% fee? Think about that. Smart contracts, folks. Then we're going to jump into a new Ripple partner that is enabling individuals and businesses from 200 plus countries to mint and redeem USDS directly on the XRP ledger. Another massive use case. And then I'm going to tell you a story. Well, I'm not going to tell it to you. Crypto Wendy's going to tell it to you. And this is how the story starts. The SEC met with FTX back in March. Dot, dot, dot. Maybe you'll fill in the blank. Maybe you won't, but I'm going to show it to you. So without further ado, folks, get over to live coin. Watch what are we seeing? Not too much has changed from this morning. We are seeing a little bit of red in some of the hourly charts. Bitcoin, $16,553. It's currently up 0.32% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum, trying to get to 1200 coming in at $1,193. It is up 2.5%. XRP 0.379. For those of you who keep a track at home, that's 37 cents, but it's up about 2% in the past 24 hours. It's up about 0.3% in the past hour. It is trying to get to 38 cents. Total cryptocurrency market cap, quite simple, 852 billion as the Bitcoin balance comes in at 37.30%. Now, folks, I don't expect any major push-ups. I don't expect any anything major to happen in crypto until we get regulations at this point, especially after what went down with FTX. Now, when we get back over, and let's jump into this Bank of America news because I got some more information I want to cover. When we look at Bank of America as a whole, when we look at all the clients they are doing business with around the world, we're talking 39 million. We're talking they're in 35 different countries. We're talking about this is a New York Stock Exchange traded company. Why in the earth would they want to use XRP? Well, it's simple. They're in 35 different countries. That means they are holding foreign currency in 34 countries, right? They don't want to do that. That's a waste. Then they got to worry about what happens if this if this currency crashes overnight. What happens if that currency crashes overnight? They see a lot of money being lost. They're still using SWIFT to move money around. Why would they have to do that in the year 2022? Well, the fact is that they don't. Now, here is the little press, the little PR piece coming out of uh, Link2 from Nick. When he said he talked to Brad face-to-face, one-on-one, and Brad said Bank of America is going to gain a competitive advantage when the SEC versus Ripple case settles by using on-demand liquidity in the marketplace. This is big, okay? 
Brad Gollinghouse knows. I've showed you the patent in the first video that went down. I do have it pulled up. I can show it to you again. Here's the patent. The name up top mentioned is Standard Charter, which you've used. We get Bank of America, Standard Charter. We got Ripple and the DLT. We have the Interledger Protocol. We got multiple currencies going through this thing. And we have Bank of America lowering their fees to move money cross border. Now, we heard, head over to NerdWall. What do we come to find out? Well, we look at the largest banks in the U.S., Who's on top, Chase? Who's on the Chase? Bank of America. What do you think Chase is going to have to do once Bank of America starts lowering the cost and cutting the cost by using XRP? This is the same instance, the same example I like to give you when we talk about MoneyGram and Western Union. MoneyGram integrated XRP on demand liquidity for the back end treasury and to move money across borders. And they were able to lower fees by a lot because XRP can save anywhere up to like 90% in fees, right? What is Western Union going to have to do? Well, they have two options. They can go out there and they can develop their own token, their own blockchain, their own whatever, and try to compete with XRP, which has a ton of liquidity built up around the world, and Western Union will just be getting started out. So I'm going to say it's going to take a little bit. Or they can just uh, sign over the deal with Ripple, integrate the private the private XRP ledger blockchain, integrate what they want to do, or just use RippleNet software, and then they are back on pace with Western, with MoneyGram. What happens if they don't do it? It's quite simple. You will see Western Union start to drop down, lose a ton of share, and MoneyGram will hop over them. This is the same thing when we compare Chase to Bank of America. We know Chase JP Morgan tried to come out with the JP Morgan coin. What was the JP Morgan coin? Well, it was a stable coin. It was a wall garden that can only be used at JP Morgan. That isn't going to do any good because all the correspondent banks around the world that Chase does business with, well, they they're going to not want to hold the JP Morgan coin. Why? Because why would they want to hold a coin that JP Morgan owns and backs? What happens if something happens to that coin? Then they're going to lose themselves. As I've stated before, these central banks around the world and governments want to control their own monetary systems, folks. It is that simple. So what is Chase going to do? We already know that Chase was in Ripple's offices back in 2018, popping champagne bottles. We know something's cooking there. You got Bank of America. Coming on, who we just found out from Brad's going to use XRP. If I had to take a wild guess at it, you're going to see Chase not too far behind him getting on the ODL bandwagon. Remember that. Now, Stably is a new Ripple partner that enables individuals and businesses from 200 plus countries to mint and redeem USDS directly on the XRP ledger. Here it is. Folks, this is big. Why is this big? Because it is allowing them to integrate the XRP ledger to issue Euro-backed stablecoins, which is going through the ledger. It says Web3 payment infrastructure provider Stably recently chose to issue a USDS stablecoin in the XRPL because it offers liquidity and settlement at scale for tokenized assets. What did I cover in yesterday's video late, late last night? If you didn't see it, we talked about tokenized assets. That is going to be the next big thing. You can tokenize anything in this world. And the fact that you can throw it up on the XRP ledger, which is ultra fast, super low cost, and built for speed, it just makes sense. Now, stably, 200 plus countries where you can redeem USDS directly on the ledger. This is what I'm talking about. This is the news we want to hear. Now, Crypto Wendy gets into this. Listen to this 30 second clip. If the, if the head of the FCC met with FTX back in March, why didn't he ask for proof of reserves back then? That's part of his job to protect consumers. Mm. Daddy Gary, head of the SEC, met with FTX March 29th, 2022. We all know that Sam came out with that predatory law. Might have been pushed by Gary from that meeting. Interesting, right? Very, very interesting. Gary, why didn't you ask them for proof of reserves? That's part of your job, to protect consumers, to protect retail. Why didn't you protect us? What in the actual F have you been doing this entire time in office besides telling crypto companies to come register with you, come talk to you? You've provided zero regulatory guidelines or clarity since in office, and you've just gone after companies. That's all you've done. It's true. Can anyone argue this? Can anyone fight this? This is 100% true and then key young puts this out i mean this is just a mic drop moment the u.s criminal justice system works well and we'll put fbf in jail soon and he put in the official sources stated that this is false and misleading 100 percent it is we know nothing's going to happen to this man he's out there he's out and about running around in the bahamas doing his thing and all he can say is i'm sorry 
You're sorry. Nine billion loss. Brady lost 650 million. Could you imagine losing 650 million? I couldn't. It makes me sick. But it gets even worse. Because look at this. CZ Binance put out and he was on an exclusive interview. Says, I wonder how many times I'll have to repeat this one in the future. Thanks to FBF's media and lobbying power. All that money that he had, he used it for media and lobbying power, which put out fake news. He tried to clean Binance as a Chinese company. Listen. For, first of all, I think the U.S. national security concerns were, were rumors spread by FTX to try to push us out of the bid. There was any, there was never any concerns about us uh, participating in the bid or Binance U.S. participating in the bid. So Binance U.S. did participate in the Voyager bid. Um, there were no issues. Uh, Binance also acquired multiple companies in America with no issues. So um, Binance is not a Chinese company. Uh, we're not related to China at all. I have to repeat this many times just because I look Chinese, um, but I've been a Canadian for 30 years. <laughs> so no issues there. Um, Binance US will make another bid for Voyager now, um, given the given FTX is no longer able to uh, follow through on that commitment. So we'll see how that, we'll see how that. He's Canadian for eight years. Company has nothing to do with China. But what was put out in people's heads from SPF through money, through the money he had, money gave him too much power. He lobbied and put all this fake media out there trying to take down Binance. But look what happened at the end of the day. He took himself out. Makes sense. And then Yasin put out, don't remember seeing this announcement before, but it looks like a use case for XRP is expanding. Now it's in real estate, not just cross border payments, folks. You know what you hold. Enjoy the rest of your day. Wash your damn hands. Be nice. Be kind to each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.